De värsta översvämningarna på 30 år. Nu till USA. Imorgon är det dags för den sista delstaten, Kalifornien, att hålla primärval. Men på republikanernas sida så är ju kandidaten redan klar. Donald Trump skulle alltså kunna bli landets näste president. Och i skenet av det får nu etablerade medier kritik för att de inte har granskat honom tillräckligt. Och det har fått allt fler amerikaner att söka sig till världens största nyhetsprogram på nätet, Young Turks i Los Angeles. We're trying to be an alternative to the establishment media here in America. And I think unfortunately a lot of the the larger media outlets on television have become propaganda for the government, the rich and the powerful. We're the outsiders, we're anti-establishment. I think that's the reason why we've had such success. Nu växer kritiken mot amerikanska medier att det är deras okritiska bevakning av Donald Trump och hans utfall som har bidragit till hans framgångar. För varje gång som Trump gör ett nytt utfall så går TV-bolagens tittarsiffror upp. Därför är det allt fler amerikaner som nu tyr sig till sociala mediers nyhetsbevakning som till exempel här hos Young Turks. They gave him at least 2 billion dollars of free media during the primaries in how much they covered him and so Donald Trump has had this great advantage because he didn't have to spend money doing advertising because he had all the free media in the world. If you offend his delicate sensibilities then he says he won't come on your show anymore. Well then you lose ratings. Donald Trump avskyr journalister och han kallar gärna journalistkåren för slödder. Enligt PolitiFact så är han den presidentkandidat som oftast ljuger, som här i en intervju med CNN. Birth certificate, one of the first. Hillary Clinton, she's the one that started it. Och Trumps påstående här att Hillary Clinton skulle vara först med att ifrågasätta Barack Obamas amerikanska medborgarskap, det stämmer inte. Men det bemöttes aldrig av CNNs programledare. Trump's behavior poses a real challenge to the news media. You know, in the American news media in particular, there's a very strong norm of objectivity. And so you want to be able to treat both candidates equally, fairly. You don't want to be seen to favor one candidate or the other. What do you do when one candidate tells a series of, of lies? Färska opinionsmätningar visar att Trumps framgångar nu bara fortsätter. What makes him qualified to be a president? Um, I'm going to answer it in a different person's voice than my own. Um, I think what Trump's supporters see in him as a president is, um, first of all, business experience that they think is valuable. Um, many people agree that the government should be run like a business. They think business is more efficient than government is. Och på redaktionen hos Young Turks så rustar man nu för en historiskt smutsig valkampanj. As quote unquote entertaining as this election has been, it's also been disastrous for the American people. We have the two most unpopular candidates in American history. How in the world did that happen? And now the establishment, in my opinion, has won because they've put us in a corner where you're going to have to vote for no change just to make sure you don't get fascist change. Good one. Good one. Good one. Idag är det svårt